And today is the video that I told you I was excited about. Today is the day that I talk about the strangest horror books that I have ever read. So I went on Amazon and I'm searching and I found some strange covers of horror books and I thought, hmm, this could be a video idea. I found the strangest ones that I thought I could find. I did not read them. I have no, I had no idea what they were about when I bought them. Some I bought the physical copy too. Some I just bought the, you know, online ebook, PDF, Kindle version. You get what I'm saying. And I decided to make a video out of it because some of these are quite interesting. So let's just begin. So here's the first book that I read. This is called How to Defend Yourself Against Alien Abduction. This is by Anne Druffel. And now I told you I did not read the synopsis, the backs, anything. I thought that this book was a joke and it is not. It is very serious. So I thought that this was going to be like a comically written story, but it is actual information on how to stop alien abduction. And it also says on the back that this is the only book with step-by-step -step instructions on what to do and not to do if aliens come knocking on your door. So this book is well written. However, it is a bit textbook-esque. It is kind of written like a textbook because it's, you know, it's there to inform you of something. It's not a story, but there are anecdotes in it, little alien story anecdotes, but we'll get to that in a second. What I thought was really interesting about this though was it talks about how aliens might exist in a different altered state. So let me just read you what it says here. The greys might be interdimensional in nature or alternatively that they may normally exist in an invisible portion of our own electromagnetic spectrum. In other words, they may, may not originate in our normally perceived space-time. Both hypotheses speculate that the so-called greys possibly have the ability to enter into our normal detectable space-time and become temporarily physical. But I thought that this was kind of an interesting viewpoint of aliens. So in this book, they aren't necessarily creatures from other planets that travel through space to visit planet Earth. They're like these beings that are perhaps in another dimension or in a field that we can't perceive that just have the ability to kind of pop into our area of the spectrum and then pop out of it. Why this is so interesting is that it does talk about how aliens aren't these superior beings as we see them as, you know, they're, they're not like super intelligent where they've conquered like the speed of light and things like that. So this book really puts it into perspective and kind of gives you more power, I think, if you are to be fighting off aliens, if that's what you're into, starting a fight club with aliens. It just gave me a different, interesting viewpoint of aliens that I honestly hadn't ever considered before. So if nothing else, that is what I got from the book. And by the way, so there are nine techniques that they tell you in this book, and some of them are like protective rage. So like if you're so protective over your family, you can use that, harness that anger to fight off aliens. But then there's also like repellents, and it's like, use some essential oils. Apparently aliens hate essential oils. So I don't know, I mean, I've never encountered an alien, but it seems odd. They also do give you a lot of, like I said, anecdotes. They give you snippets of other people's stories. So it'll be like technique nine, uh, use essential oils or whatever. And then it'll be like Amy from Ohio used essential oils to fight off her alien encounters in 96. And then it kind of goes into Amy's story. However, this can be irritating if it doesn't pertain to the book, it doesn't finish the story. So there's this one story I'm getting so into it. It's about how a woman murdered an alien that broke into her house to abduct her. And I'm like, oh my gosh, what happened? Were the aliens mad? Was the body there? Or what happened in the morning and then it's like but the rest doesn't pertain to the book so let's move on and I'm like no I can't move on from that so that can be frustrating so I would suggest to not pick this book up if you're looking for alien stories but if you have been abducted by aliens and you're trying to get them to stop this seems like it's a step-by-step -step guide to assist you with that there are pictures of aliens so this is actually a picture that somebody took supposedly from aliens that came into his or her house. And then here is the altered photo. So they just lightened it. Very eerie if this is true. Terrifying. I don't know, but let me tell you, after reading this, I am ready for alien abduction. Come at me, alien motherfuckers. Okay, not really, because I don't really want to be abducted and watch the aliens watch this video and they get pissed off that I just called them alien motherfuckers. I am going straight to the anal probe line. So I'm just, I'm just kidding. Don't abduct me, please. But that is the first book that I read in this series of strange horror books. The second one that I read, this is also very odd. It's called Zombie Raccoons and Killer Bunnies. 
Mm -hmm. This is a collection of short stories. So going into this, I bought it thinking like, I'm gonna hate this, right? Like this is gonna be the most ridiculous book ever. However, that's not uh, exactly how it went. Uh, one thing I didn't like about it, I will say it is all about, it's not necessarily about zombies and raccoons. It is just kind of about like killer animals zombie animals, things like that. But there is a lot of animal death. And if you guys know me, you know I have a lot of animals. I love animals. So any sort of animal death really bothers me. So a lot of this book made me just really sad. Some of the stories were really funny. Some of them were creepy. Some of them were weird. There are stories about finding pigeons that are watching you, but that are actually robots. There's a story about an evil rabbit written from the perspective of a chicken, which I thought was pretty creative. They're interesting stories and some of them I really enjoyed. Some of them I thought were funny. Some of them have like morals. So they're fairy tales. Is that a fairy tale where they use animals but there's a moral of the story? No, I think it's a fable. Either way, some of them have that. I don't know. It's just kind of like a cute whatever a fun book. It was just a few books I think. But um, I did enjoy some of the stories. Some of the stories I didn't love but it was an interesting read and I did like it more than I thought I would. Okay, let's get to the fun stuff. By the way, these are only in the order of the way that I read them. I'll tell you my favorite at the end. So this is the third book that I read. It is called Every Time We Meet at the Dairy Queen, Your Whole Fucking Face Explodes. <laughs> and this is by Carlton Melick III. What do I say about this book? My, my. So first of all, this book was pretty entertaining. So it's about this young couple, they're in junior high and they're quite smitten with each other. But every time they get close and talk, the girl gets too nervous and her face explodes. You know, you go through their life and they, he ends up moving in with her. I'll get to that in a second. But there's also like a bully at school that beats him up. But there's a quote in here that says, but there's a big problem. Every time we go on a date, her face explodes. And so I thought that this was interesting because it's absolutely a metaphor. You know that first time love when, you've, when you're just obsessed with someone, you get butterflies every time you see them you get so anxious every time you talk to them. I thought it was really interesting taking that metaphor and turning it into a literal story where someone's actually exploding because they're so excited. I thought it was fun. That's a fun idea. That's creative. That's interesting. That's innovative. And then at the end, after he moves in with the family, he talks to the father and the father talks about how um, she got her face exploding from her mother, but her mother's face doesn't explode anymore. And the little boy is envious of him that that her face doesn't explode because he's sick of getting like blood and guts on his face. Well, not guts, but skin and stuff. And the father says, once your relationship loses its explosiveness, it won't ever be the same. Oh, dagger in the heart. I don't know. This, I just thought that it was such a cute idea. Just taking that, like those fluttery, cute feelings and turn, then turning them into a horror story. <laughs> that being said, there are some very disturbing parts of this book and a lot of it you're reading and you're like, what am I reading? So this guy actually has a lot of Kindle literal stories online. Um, this is the only one that I've read, but I have read that all of his stories are quite weird. So if you're into like weird literature, I would say this guy is a good place to start. It gets weird. It's bloody and graphic for sure, but that's not even what bothered me. There's just some weird things that happen with the bully specifically that really grossed me out and made me but it was still a really fun story and at the basis I thought that it was such a cute idea. Okay, so now number four. This one is called Sperm Jackers from Hell by Christine Morgan. This one. Oh my gosh. So I bought this one and I'm like, there's no way I'm gonna like this. This is just gonna be a silly story. I, you know, I had some reservations about reading these. I really enjoyed this story. Okay, so first of all, it was well written. Second of all, so funny. It made me actually laugh. So it's a group of of guys and one girl a group of friends all the guys just play video games and they're kind of stoners and they just hang out and they decide that they need to get laid so instead of courting young women no 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 that would be too much work they decide to summon from the depths of the hell a slutty demon sex slave and so they all partake in summoning this demon it does not turn out as anticipated and instead of a like hot chick demon instead of that it's these <laughs> slugs they seduce you and stuff and then they just kind of make you think that you're with a hot woman even though you're actually just with this like weird slug creature the face exploding one was very graphic 
horror wise this one is very explicit it's very very sexual <laughs> one thing i really liked about that story is that it broke the fourth wall so i've seen a lot of movies break the fourth wall but i don't think i've ever read a book not that comes to the top of my head the top of my head is that an expression why does that sound so weird we're just gonna move on from that i, I can't think of any book to my knowledge that breaks the fourth wall and so this one i was like oh this is kind of funny where the narrator just cuts in and okay for example they'll summon a demon right and it'll end and then it'll go to the next chapter and the narrator will be like what a bunch of idiots am i right and so you just have this fun interaction with the narrator i don't know i thought that was really unique oh and then they summon the demon by and i quote one fucked up scavenger hunt which includes youth's new spilled seed and moon blood of a new a nubile maiden is it nubile or nubile i feel like it should be nubile but i don't think that's how it's pronounced nubile, nubile but it's n-u-b-i-l-e so shouldn't it be nubile english makes no Thing sounds, I swear. Anyways, let me see if there's anything else I need to say about this one. Very sexual with some disturbing stuff too. Yeah, I would say that that pretty much sums it up. I also like the ending. I mean, I hope I'm not ruining this for any for you guys, but it's funny. If you don't want to know how it ends, skip 10 seconds. It ends with all of them being overtaken by this like beehive of those slimy creature things. The whole town being overrun by these hell demon slut things. And also all the females in the town being extra fertile from some accidental spillage of some fertile medication being put in the water supply. So you have very fertile women plus these demon creatures. It leaves it very open for a, another story. I don't know if there is one. I really didn't check that far into it, but I thought it was really funny. I thought it was odd. It's weird. Before you pick it up, let me just clarify. It's a weird story. It is extremely sexual and odd. There's also a part in the book about a dog and a man. I'm not even gonna get into it. Some parts are very disturbing and I'm not saying it's the best book ever written, nor am I saying I enjoyed every part of it. So before you pick it up and you're like, this bitch is crazy for liking it. I warned you, but out of the four books, I think that one was my favorite just because it was so funny. I think that horror and humor just go so well together. So those are the four books that I read. Which one sounds the most interesting? Let me know if you guys want a part two of this because I would love to read more strange books. Also, let me know what the strangest horror book you have ever read is, and maybe I will pick it up for the next time. Anyways, that is it for this video. Thank you so much for watching, and I will see you again on Thursday with another horror video. Bye, guys. Bye.